Okay, we're good. Okay, problem resolved. So, chat. Okay. Get ready for the uh, get ready for the run to begin now. Yeah. Sorry about that. All right. So, am I good to give a countdown whenever? All right. Fantastic. So, let's get started. No, no, wrong button. Okay. So um, there's 24 seconds of cutscene um, before we actually begin. So this is the mosquito. And I will give a countdown to when you get control. So just a moment here. There also should be game audio now. So just in case there isn't, uh, make note. All right, and three, two, one, go. We're off. All right. So this is 19XX, The Worgen's Destiny. It is a, I believe, 1995 um, arcade vertical shmup by Capcom. Um, that's not what I wanted, but that's fine. Um, it is um, this. I'm playing it on Switch on the Capcom arcade collection. Um, that was released, I believe, earlier this year. Um, could be wrong on that, though. Um, it is standard shmup-style stuff, though. Dude, give me that. Um, so the very first... This stage is very easy, beginner. And here is Hello, the first everyone. boss, Ayako. I'm, I'm going to explain a little bit more about stuff, but uh, I'm, I'm joined by Deathline as well, so say hi, Deathline. Even though I know not as much as Poké does. Fantastic. That's okay. It's all it's all part of it. So that was a pretty good Aiko. Um, the reason we choose the mosquito is because the mosquito has the highest uh, damage output. It is the slowest plane, but it deals the most damage. And since, as you can tell, the levels are um, side scroll or excuse me, auto scrolling, um, there isn't too much like to do during these sections. Um, there will be some stuff I'll be micromanaging, and I'll explain that shortly. Um, but for the most part, uh, the major time saves are going to be on bosses and mini-bosses. And having damage, obviously, is the way to uh, speed those up. So dealing a whole lot of damage, doing the bosses faster, and thus completing a level faster. Um, so I am also using this orange power-up. I don't know if the power-ups actually have names or not. There's an orange one, a blue one, and a green one. The green one's the worst one. I hate the green one. The green one's like this laser, and the laser's job is to, is like, it goes through stuff. It's really weak, but if it hits something, it keeps going. So like, it's it's not stopped when it hits an enemy, like every other bullet is in the game. Um, that's like its whole thing, but it's so weak. It, it's just not worth having. Um, this is actually probably the best stage to have the laser on, but uh, it's bad. There's also the blue one. The blue one ha is... Uh, I had it for a second in the first level. It is a more, like, direct fire uh, attack. And um, it's pretty good for damage, but it doesn't have the spread that this orange one does. And this orange one is also the native bullets of the Mosquito. So each of the three planes has a native gun. And all that basically means is that uh, there is a gun when you die, when, you're, when the plane dies, um, it's what spawns. And also, dying is very good in this game because you get three bombs whenever you die and bombs are unbelievably busted in this game. Yeah, I looked it up and power ups. I don't know the colors by and what they associate to the name, but the names are four fire, uh, super shell, and three way. Which, okay, I'm gonna guess yeah, that what I'm having is three way, then that would make sense. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the three way gun that I'm using then. Um, does spread damage, and it also has a crazy rate of fire, especially the upgraded version. Uh, it has 
Um, fantastic range. It's it's great against a lot of bosses because a lot of bosses also have um, separated weak points. And so being able to hit those multiple weak points at the same time is really, really good. Um, but anyways, good. like I was saying, bombs are unbelievably broken in this game. So bombs, bombs in a vertical shmup um, are a staple of the genre is a screen clear, right? It does damage to everything on screen and it gets rid of all the enemy bullets on screen. Um, also, you know, very common in bullet hell games as well, um, just to get you out of danger. And obviously the intended purpose of bombs are supposed to be for screen clearing. It is supposed to be, I am in a situation which I cannot avoid being hit. So I'm going to use a bomb to clear, to make, make a path for myself through the bullets. And yeah, it does that. But out of all the 19XX series, um, there's plenty of games in the series. There's 1940 through 1944, and then uh, 1940 through 1943, and then 1945 and 19XX. Um, uh, through all of the all of the games in this series, the bombs in this version do the most damage. So not only are they screen clearing, they just tear through units. And because we're playing this on an arcade emulator. We don't care about dying. You know, I have as many credits as I need. Um, so there is a good chunk of death abuse in this game because you're going to do this attack where you have like a homing, you charge it for a little bit and does a little homing shot. Um, we see a little green missiles there. Um, it's really good. And when you do that and combined by spamming your three bombs and then literally sitting inside the enemy to die as soon as possible, it just cleaves through the enemies in this game at an unbelievable pace. Um, you probably saw it on Ayako, the first one. Raime is not a great example of, which was the second boss on the second stage. Raime is not a great example of, of just how crazy the damage output can be. But when you factor in bombs plus the homing shot plus the way that the spread fire of the three-way gun works, it is so much damage. Unbelievably so much damage way more than and way more in an unintended way than how the developers wanted it to use so right there by taking out this yellow tank we actually go through the cave a little bit faster if that if that little yellow tank or artillery I'm not entirely sure what it is could be missiles as well um is still alive then it'll take a little bit longer for the screen to progress so there's a bunch of those small things it usually happens with mini bosses to make the game progress just a little bit faster there's a bunch of Things you probably wouldn't think about in uh, a vertical shmup. But yeah. Anyways, that's why we use the mosquito. Um, that's why we use the mosquito. It does a ton of damage. We death abuse for bombs because bombs are broken in this game. Um, and then we use them and death abuse to do bosses rather quickly. And uh, even though I have unlimited bombs, and that is quite nice. That was close. Um, I still don't want to just, uh, just throw myself willy nilly because you can get these bomb drops from, uh, as you probably saw, you can get these bomb drops from random enemies and thus, um, having those extra bomb drops basically means you're allowed to carry, you know, four or up to five in a single, um, quarter. And man, it can be, again, quite the damage output. As you see here, I'm literally just spamming bombs and hoping for the best. So this back row here, it's supposed to be like a haha gotcha noob thing. Um, it sends us a ray of missiles or bullets mm -hmm. once you kill the main boss. It's supposed to be like haha gotcha, yeah. but you can just <laughs> run into it and then get your bombs back. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, so it's a benefit armor. in the long run. Um, again, yeah, that's Carbert. Um, again, we're obviously not in playing this exactly like it's intended. Um, because Death Abuse doesn't really make sense for an arcade game. Obviously, the developer... Oh, that's unfortunate. The developer wants you to put quarters in the machine, right, for pool. That's obviously the point of it. But we're not supposed to be beating the game like we are. We are tearing through stuff without much of a care because if we die, it's not a big deal. However, every continue we use when we run out of the three lies we get per quarter or per credit in the machine, uh, there is a little like continue cutscene, 
And that wastes about two seconds. So unnecessary deaths are one of the big <laughs> ways you can. That was, was, oh my god! Yeah, sometimes I you just have that to take for a second. Too, right? um, there's you cannot always avoid everything, even if you have bombs. You sometimes don't want to just right. throw it out. Like sometimes you just have to eat that death. Yeah, especially if you're really close to a boss or mini boss, it can just be better. Okay, I'm dying way too much now. I'm talking too much, but especially if you're right near a mini boss or boss, it can be better just to die um, than to use bombs. In that scenario, I should have used bombs, and I just was talking instead of thinking about that. But that's okay. Um, having un unnecessary continues is mm -hmm. again like a really big time loss in this run. And avoiding unnecessary deaths is um, pretty crucial if you want a really good time. But obviously, you're still going to be burning through, like, at minimum, seven, eight continues. Just because, again, bombs are so good. Oh, I try to squeeze through that. Um, if there are any big Toho players in the chat, I'm sure that I'm probably getting judged, being like, wow, I can't believe you got hit by that. Unbelievable. Terrible player. Um... So yeah, typically, if you're in the middle of a stage like this, where you're just kind of beating stuff up as you go along, dude, I ran into that. Uh, using bombs is fine, because it prevents unnecessary deaths. So obviously, you want to save your bombs for the final, but I mean, there's plenty of... Dude, this is, level has been so bad. Um, typically, there's plenty of opportunities to, um, to die again and get your bombs back. So having... Um, using your bombs in the middle of the stage when you're just kind of running through it is, generally speaking, a good thing because you'd rather have that than unnecessary deaths. Okay, now here's the boss of this level. Uh, I do Grant. not have bombs right now. Grants, excuse me. There we go. And it's a nice naval ship that you need to yeah. get rid of over here in this area of the world. Oh, I never explained the plot of this game. Also, yeah, so by the, the way, Grant flips over pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it, it's it's kind of silly. It is still a Capcom game. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's not what I wanted. I missed the power up the first time. But you see here, whenever I die, I grab the power up that um, that when you die, you know, it leaves a power up behind. And then, dude, kill me, please, <laughs> kill me, is God, please, I don't want this gun. It, the, the mosquito, so. <laughs> You don't you don't want it. Yeah, it just doesn't do it just doesn't do damage. And if you pick the yeah. mosquito, your goal is probably um, to do as much damage as you can. So it's not it's not great. Each before we before we discuss the plot, um each so there's three planes. There's Go the on. mosquito, the lightning, and the shinden. And then there's the, the three power ups, and each power up corresponds with a certain plane. That's why uh, for the Mosquito, which has the highest power rate yes. out of all three uh, planes, you want to get three-way, because that's the one that resonates with the Mosquito. Yes. So it is really good for death, ab death abuse, too, because when you die, you get the bombs, but you still get um, the three-way back. And now there are, now the, the like, four-shot, whatever the blue one is, um also does pretty good against bosses and there will be um probably the best boss it's good against oh, is F the blacker. final boss against f blacker just because you're sitting on top of it but it's not worth it is not worth switching the planes in the continue menu or any anything else to get to it so there are situational uses where the like blue four-way power up is advantageous but there's just no reason to get it it's too much of a time sink for not enough time save um, which is unfortunate because I feel like gun variety would help the run um, at least yeah. somewhat, but it is what it is. It's just not worth the time kind of hard to, to, expect uh, that out of to switch guns. Um, but yes, yeah, so the plot of 19XX is right. you're set in a fictional time of 19XX <laughs> and the TLDR of it is um, the world is basically in like the stage right before complete doomsday <laughs> and you're trying to prevent that <laughs> yeah there is yeah so what ha what's happening is that there is there is nation state tension 
between uh, countries. There is tension between other countries. This is the like four-way blue thing. You can see how this could be advantageous for certain bosses. Um, and there is statewide tension. And it doesn't seem like it's necessarily going to go to war. I guess World War One parallel, if you want to say that. It doesn't necessarily seem on the surface like the world's going to go to war. But there's this there's this like military defense corporation or whatever, and it wants to go to war. And so that's what we're fighting right now. We are a lone pilot trying to prevent an evil, corrupt, like defense company or something like that from causing World War Three to happen. That is the plot of this game. It is absurd. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, yeah. We're the, the pilot, yeah. We're trying to we're trying to stop Armageddon. Uh, is employed <laughs> by the World Peacekeeping Agency. Um, and they employ either one or two. Oh, that's right. Yeah, to play this game with co-op, and the co-op run is basically just any percent, but with another player. Um, it, it's like the death abuse is a little different with how you yes. have two people, but it's basically the same thing. Yeah. So. Uh, this game does not ha lend itself to many categories. There's not like alternate paths or anything, you know. There's nothing, there's nothing really special you can do about this game. So it's just any percent and any percent co-op. And co-op, it's um, pretty easy to avoid getting the game over continue screens, especially if people are continuing um, their credits at different times. Um, so you don't have to worry about that as much. Um, things do have more health in co-op. But um, so it makes the co-op run like about a minute slower than eight <laughs> percent, but it's even more brain dead. It's you don't have because to you are anything. you. There is no thoughts. You don't have to worry about a necessary. You don't have to worry about a necessary death. You are just dying, pressing bomb, charge shot, dying, pressing bomb, charge shot. It is mindless as hell. Um. So this one, this one's a pretty good uh, just wham on it. Uh, boss. This is Sancho Pedro. Yeah, and uh, this boss is pretty fun. It's on like a railroad track, and I'm pretty sure the idea is that it's suppo you're supposed to prevent it from getting to the end of a track before it gets launched, but even if you do this boss as slowly as possible, it won't ever get to that point. Um, so yeah, that's that's like the goal, and you're just... and But yeah, you just kind of wail on it. That's what you do. It's very close to dying right now. There we go. Whenever you die as well, um, there is a uh, explosion effect on screen. And the explosion effect also does act mm -hmm. like a bomb, but it doesn't do as much damage as a normal bomb does. So it's just meant to like screen, screen clear. It doesn't. Re it's not really supposed to do damage as well. Uh, so okay, that was Sancho Pedro. That was an okay. That was an okay level. I was definitely a pretty good boss yeah. fight. Uh, we're getting pretty close to the end of this. This is the last real yeah, stage of the limits, run, but there's like is, two main. I parts think that's to it. like the actual name of the evil uh, organization trying to take over the world right now, or put it in world domination. But oh, it might be. Uh, I'm not too sure. As about we're getting that. into the second to last section of the the run, um, 19xx is part of a bigger series. Um, I just wanted to mention that that actually has quite a legacy of arcade games with being uh, shoot 'em ups um, part of the, the 194X series, which started back in the 1980s. And some of those games sucked <laughs> a lot. Yes. Yeah, the, fir the first couple, like 1940 and 1941, aren't great games. <laughs> They're... They're not, like, the worst, but it's still, like, an 80s shmup, so the technology wasn't really there for, like, what they really wanted to do with it. It was, it was like, close, and they got, like, a, a, a fraction of their vision, but it wasn't until 1942 came out that it was like, okay, this is what they were going for. Like, it was really when the technology started to catch up to what the developers were wanting. Um, and it became increasingly obvious. In 1942 and 1945 are considered the best games in the series. This one's also considered good by the ones that have played it, but I believe the cabinets for this game are a little bit more uncommon than 1942 and 1945 cabinets were, at least in the um, United States. Uh, but yeah, so this is, this is, in my opinion, the best game of the series. I still think 1945 is good, 
but I am not really a 1942 yeah, fan. I um, it's it still shows. They its brought age, back a few 1942 that. entries in the ah, around 2000. Yeah, 19. There's like a uh, mobile. There's like a mobile game port of 1942 or something. Which came out in 2008 and 2010 respectively, and those didn't really go over that well. Um, you also had the 194X okay. 3D dogfight in 2006, which was like, <laughs> what the hell not was that? Popular. I don't even think I've ever heard of that year, one. But um... are you just reading these from a Wikipedia page, Deathline? Is that what is that what's going on here? I'm, there uh, certainly sounds I'm like it's got a list. Right? Like He's just I'm not blaming off a list of games. I don't blame series. him, but it's kind of funny. But... To me. <laughs> From what people know of, I'm this certainly series, learning a lot. I just X learned. Probably the most I, I just googled out of the 194X series for sure. This game, this game, off, this game sold very well in Japan. I know that. I had a, uh, I had a quick Google of the pronunciation because I, I was curious, and uh, Poke Hero is correct. It is pronounced De Havilland. Yeah. Which okay. Is cool. So so disappointing. I agree, but uh, is what it is. Yeah. So this is the boss of Outer Limits. This dude has a name. I don't know it because on my splits think, I just I think label outer this Limits Outer Limits. This thing might yeah. be called Outer Limits. At least the stage I'm name. not the sure. Stage name is, outer is Limits, it? So. Okay. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So that boss is pretty fun to wail on. Um, and then, whoa, what's this? We're having a results screen, but the screen didn't change? What's that about? Oh my goodness. And, yeah, it's yeah, just now we're in the final section of the run. Uh, um, F Blacker. Yeah, this is truly the last stage. Yes. So the there's been that like black jet that we've seen a few times so far. It's acted like a mini boss. Yeah. Um, its name is F Blacker, and it's like I'm guessing holding the CEO or whoever uh, who's planning this whole thing, and our goal is to kill it once and for all. Here's a mini boss. And, um... <laughs> okay, the mini boss is dead now. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's really short. It's just great great example of how just so, busted this whole. I'm gonna be that is. person. I'd like to mention that Pokero, a wonderful runner here, does have the world record for any percent um, at a 23 28 now, I believe. Thank you, thank you. 27. Excuse me. Um, and uh, 27. a long-standing joke since Poke has picked up this game is that he will always get a best segment on F Blacker, and every time he will proceed to go, there's no way this can be improved, and then continues to improve it. <laughs> because just somehow, some way, it gets faster and faster every time. I always find a way to improve that split. Um, I, I just got um, a record when I was practicing for this um, game yesterday, um, and that was the first world record that did not have a blue on F Blacker and like six world records. Like, I seriously legitimately did it every single run, and I only didn't blew it by like half a second. Um, I legitimately do blew that split every run, so maybe we'll, we'll blew it this run. It's possible. I am like 24 seconds behind right now, but You'll just think about that. It doesn't matter if you do the last one, though. Uh, nice 230 segment. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this this boss is pretty fun. This is like the F Blacker, like, this is like, he sets himself in it to use as like a proxy or something like a puppet, I guess. Um, you have to destroy each of the wings one by one, and there's three layers of defense on each of the wings. Um, and you, you're you supposed to destroy them from left side in, but you actually want to destroy them kind of from the left side in, because whenever you bomb, it'll do like the finish the rest of the damage of the wing. And so stuff like that, you're micromanaging. Yeah, see there, I, I, I killed the left wing without even having to actually like target it after I had done a lot of damage. Yeah, so here I'm literally just going to do damage and sit on it. And this is the last one. So time will be coming up here. It should flash orange before I kill it. It should be like one more cycle maybe. Oh, nope, just like that. All right. And... Aww. 
second time. Ah, oh. oh, I didn't blew it by a second. GG's. Ah, oh. all right, GG's though. That's twenty. That's a twenty-three, I believe. Uh, timer started so a little bit late, so it should be about a twenty-three, four X, I believe. Okay, I had a twenty-three fifty-two on my really timer, good. That's a twenty-three regardless. Run, Run through. Um, yeah. Um, the world record in March was not a 23 yet. Like there, there was never a 23 done by March of this year. So getting a 23 in a marathon six months later is pretty good. I'd say. Uh, That's excellent. Well done. Thank you very much. Um, that was a fun little run. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, game is a little ridiculous, but I do believe it's, uh, kind of fun to watch the evisceration of the, I've I've never seen levels. this game before, and I had a blast. So I'm sure lots of other people in chat probably did too. And uh, Sanchini in chat just pointed out that all three runs uh, were 23 minutes long during the shmup block. So oh, that's <laughs> that's interesting that? for you uh, for you sna- stats nerds out there. Um, I enjoyed all three runs personally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Pucky. Yeah, I, I appreciate you guys having me. Thanks support. to Deathline for helping co-commentate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, appreciate it, guys.